hello and good morning everyone my name is Sharonda Parker and welcome to sex talk with Sharonda and today we're gonna be the topic is um build a man relationship that's gonna be our topic today because I was reading um some of the the anonymous stories and posts from yesterday and um i was just kind of like wow 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 okay and let me say this while everybody's logging on i want you to be mindful of what you're posting because i'm getting a lot of notifications uh from community standards concerning nudity and sexual activity facebook has gotten extremely strict so we want to make sure that we're following guidelines that way our sh our group is not in jeopardy of being shut down. So, um, I want to go to this particular um, question. Because I, I, that's what made me decide to pick this live. To do, to do the live on this. Uh, let's see. I'm looking for it. And I'm just giving everyone a chance to log in because I was going live from my other Sharonda Parker page and um, I was noticing that I guess you all weren't getting the notifications that I was going live. So it wasn't a lot of participation. Okay, so I found it. So this is what it reads. Okay, anonymous. Last year, my boyfriend proposed to me, but I haven't set the date. He keeps asking about the date, and I told him we will see after COVID. Now, let me stop there, because we all know that um, from what I'm seeing on the news, we probably will not get back to normal until 2022. But anyway, <laughs> he is a good man, but I really feel like I'm settling. Woo, child. Okay. I have met other men who could take care of me, but they weren't faithful. Okay. My fiance is faithful, but he works in fast food and I don't see him ever being able to give me what I feel like I deserve. It's like I'm trying to see if someone better will come along because once we get married, that's it. I'm also embarrassed to tell people, my family and my coworkers, where he works. He cleans up well, and he's very attractive. We met through a family friend, and this was really supposed to be a fuck and move situation, but we really love each other. He's not interested in going back to school or getting a trade because I have asked him. He said that he hated school. I'm currently working for the state, and I have a degree. I feel like my life is, I feel like my life is, not looking the way that I envisioned it. I'm so confused. Okay. So let's jump into it. Let's jump into it. Let's jump into it. I want to make sure that I can see y'all's comments and stuff. All right. So first of all, when I'm reading this, I always, I don't know how old these people are. Um, when she says that he works in fast food, um, he's not interested in getting a trade. He's not interested in going back to school. He does not like school. So that in itself kind of tells me that this person has pretty much accepted their life for what it is. Okay. I think we all have been there at one point in time or another where we may have entertained someone and the whole idea of entertaining them, we never thought that it would grow into anything else. It almost kind of just happened. Like, this was originally supposed to just be a play around thing, but now I done got caught up, okay? Another thing is, I think sometimes when a man asks a woman to marry them, a lot of times we get so caught up in the whole idea that someone picked us to be their wife that 
I don't know how the proposal was. I don't know if it was in front of people. I don't know if it was private between them. But uh, most times when proposals happen, most times it's amongst other people. And a lot of times you're so overwhelmed and so happy that, oh my God, somebody picked me and they want me to be their wife. And, you know, somebody wants me in this type of way to you're excited. And a lot of times you do scream out that yes, right? But then reality starts to sit in and you really start to think and you really start to look at your life as a whole. And what happens if your life isn't looking the way you envisioned it? What happens is what happens if I'm really enjoying this good time? I'm really enjoying our company and I'm enjoying this good time and I'm really vibing with you. But I don't necessarily know even after I've said yes, that you are the one. Because I envision my life to look a certain way. And I envision for me to live a certain way. I envision a certain type of person to be the father of my children. I envision to live in a certain type of home. I envision to travel to certain countries. I envision, and I, I know everybody's saying, oh, oh, that's materialistic, materialistic, materialistic. But at the end of the day, it's life. And in order to be able to live a full life, to, to do some of the things that some people want to be able to do, it requires a certain amount of money. And it requires you to be able to step up to the plate in certain type of ways. And basically, when I read this, this woman basically said, I really like this man. I even love him. But I just don't believe that he could give me the life that I envision for myself. Because I have invested in myself. I did the things that I was supposed to do. I went to school. I got degree. I went and got me a job that can give me retirement and certain types of things like that. But he's in fast food. I don't know if he's a manager in fast food. I don't know if he has a franchise in fast food. But honestly, I can't see this person being, um, I can't see them having um, any, any status or management position or anything like that because the way this is written is like, he okay with mopping the flow and he okay with shaking fries. I really like him. He very attractive. He clean up very well. He look good. He might even fuck me good. But he on the fries. He mopping the flow. And when people ask me what he do, I don't even want to have that conversation because I'm ashamed of his occupation. I would much rather say he jumping on the back of a garbage truck than to say he on fries. For some people, it may seem shallow. For some people, they may feel like, you know what, you wrong for letting it get this far and out of hand but the reason i picked this topic was because i saw a lot of women that were on that particular post and they all were saying things like why you don't encourage him why you don't motivate him why you don't do these things? And I was just reading it. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I felt where they was coming from. But I was just reading it. And I was like, at 40 years old, I think I'm over the build a man stage in my life. I, how many of y'all are in the age group with me? And I'm going to say 30 plus. Just give me like a clap your hands emoji. Like, let me know if you in the 30 plus club and your build a man days are kind of over. But see, some people, they always want to be the one to help. And what I see a lot of times is these same people that help when they have invested so much into these people and then it don't work out the way they felt like it worked out. They feel like they've invested so much because when I met him, he ain't have nothing. When I met him, he ain't have a car. When I met him, he was living with his sister. When I met him, he I, I, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't. But you still accepted him. 
And my, I guess my question is, why is it as black women, we are expected to accept you coming with nothing? And why is it that we are looked down upon? We are the only race of women, black women, that is frowned upon because we want somebody who has something. We want someone who is established. We get labeled as gold diggers. We get labeled as being materialistic. We get labeled as, as not being uh, just basically this is why we don't get good men and this is why good men pass us up and all of this kind of bullshit because we want somebody that got something. For whatever reason in this situation, at this point, this woman had caught her head. And she like, you know what? It was one thing for us to be playing around with each other and fucking each other. But now this motherfucker want to marry me. And then I would have said yes. But now I'm getting cold feet and now I'm starting to have some doubts. You can't get mad at nobody for thinking about their future. And let me say this here. I have even seen men who know they ain't got shit. Who know they ain't got nothing to bring to the same table. But for whatever reason, they meet a woman and she entertains him. And she got a little bit more going than what he got going. He talk about shit. I better, I better hold on to this him because she, she already got a house. Oh, I better hold on to this him because she driving a new car, but she got another one parked up and she got multiple cars. And I can get my ass up in one of them. You got men who love a woman who done already got her shit together. Because they ain't really got to come in and do nothing. And you got them right he going to help and throw a ring on her finger. Because he's trying to lock it down. But when women like me see the gameplay... Then I see a lot of other women that get to talking shit saying, oh, that's messed up. Send it my way because I'm looking for a good man. Well, you you, you know what? You look for a good, good man who ain't got shit for you. But you can't get mad because another woman may say, yeah, he a good man. And yeah, he faithful, but he ain't got shit. He ain't got shit to bring to the table. Now I'm about to start reading some of these comments. I can, uh, Ms. Miller says, I can only speak for myself as a black woman. I have devalued myself. Let me see. As a black woman, I have devalued myself and lowered my standards to have a man. I'm thinking you meant to put that you shouldn't have to devalue yourself. That's what I'm thinking that you're saying. I think it's just a typo. It definitely applies to women as well. That is correct, Ms. Lewis. But they have them. I met a guy, and he told me that he never met a woman like me. He has always had to help a woman, never been with a woman who had their shit together. Mm -hmm. If she says he doesn't want to get a trade or go to school, she has already had the conversation to motivate and encourage him, and that was the result. We have to learn to listen, and I think we can change people. Oh, my God, Reagan. Oh my God, you have just said a mouthful. We as women always going in shit trying to think we can make it better. We had that shit bad. We always thinking we're going to go in and change some shit. He got a fucked up family dynamic and he don't fuck with his people. Oh, I'm going to come in and we're going to bring this family together. Oh, he jumping from job to job to job to job to job. Oh, my, my cousin work over here at this company. I'm going to get him on over there. I'm going to get him on over there because it's all of these other jobs. They the problem. He ain't the problem. So I'm going to help him out and get him on over here with my cousin because all of these other places that it didn't work out at, it, it, was, it was them and not him. That, but he the common denominator. But we're going to fix it. We're going to fix it. We're going to fix it. He ain't got a car. Oh, I'm going to let him drive my car. I'm going to fix this transportation problem for him. Oh, he ain't got no phone. 
Oh, I'm going to put him on my plan. He said he's going to pay his part of the bill. We're going to fix it. But then these are the same type of women that get in the group who are pouring their heart out because they've been heartbroken. Because they've given so much. Because they went in trying to change it and fix it. For people who really not even deserving. See, I'm, I'm 40 years old. At this point in my life, I look at the things that some women say. And they got such things as old fools. Now, I'm going to say this. And I... There's no harm intended. Because the thing is, I always talk about my own life. Talk about my own family. Talk about the things that I've seen. My grandmother, Susie, dated this man named Zedric. Zedric was married. She got him from his married wife with nothing. She got a married man who ain't had shit when he was with his wife. Mm -hmm. But for whatever reason, Susie wanted a man, I guess. Then he was illiterate. Couldn't read. But Susan wanted a man. I'm talking about my grandmother. My mama's mama. Susan wanted a man. But the thing about my grandmother was, she wasn't the smartest woman in the world, but she understood how credit worked. And she had very, very good credit. And she could go to the credit union and she can go get whatever she wanted from the credit union. She would buy these little cheap houses and fix them up and rent them out. So she had, she, she's still living. She has multiple rental properties. Okay. But let's get back to this man, this, this, this wanting a man situation. Because see, the thing is, we got to be mindful of who we taking counsel from. Because we got to look at how they live their life. Susan wanted a man. She went and got Zedric, who ain't had shit and was illiterate. She decided that I'm going to help him. She went to the credit union. When he got the money, went and bought Zedric a truck. Put Zedric in the truck. Now, Zedric got the truck because he gonna start a lawn service business. My grandmother like, okay, I'm gonna help you start the lawn service business. But then he go get with the people, but she gotta get on the phone and talk with the people. She gotta, because he, 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 he don't can't read or write and all this shit. So now she gotta talk to the people, arrange the contracts, now she got to go take him over here to the people house so he can know where they stay at, so he can know how to get there because his literate ass can't read the street name if he saw it. You done invested all of this into this man. All of a sudden, every time you look up, you getting sick. You can't even spray your perfume on you because you getting sick. You can't eat this because you getting sick. Now he want to put shit in your food and put shit in your perfume and put shit in his hair. Because, for whatever, but this, this, a lot of times when you deal with people that's ignorant, they come with their ignorant ways too. They do. So the thing is, you bringing these ignorant people into your life who ain't got shit, but then you get to act surprised when they ignorant ways show up. And here it is, my mama and the, the aunties trying to Figure out what the hell wrong with her. Why she keep being sick? Why she can't get out the bed? Because well, you got this ignorant ass man with these ignorant ass ways. I was a child seeing this. I was a child. And I made up my mind then. I, this won't be me. Mm -mm. So then she gets better because she realizes what the hell he's doing. But do she let his ignorant ass go? No, because we love to hold on to some piece of shit ass, nothing ass man. We love to hold on to him. Then he decides that he going to go and get him a young woman. The woman, at this point, I was a young lady in my 20s. My grandmother was in her 60s. He decides he going to go get him a 20-year-old. And this 20-year-old thinks she going to run circles around my fucking grandmother and be disrespectful to my grandmother. Right? But you go out there and you, you went and found this. And then you didn't even want to let it go. And when I ran, when I seen this young woman who was calling and hanging up and coming by and being disrespectful, now you got your family all up in the shit. Now I'm young and dumb. I done beat the woman ass. Because she my age. I done jumped the fucking fence at the store. If you know anything about Allison, 
You know that they got a store where my grandmother lived at. There was a fence that divided her house from the store. And when I seen the bitch at the store, I jumped the store and went over there and beat her ass for messing with my grandmother. But what I'm saying all of this to say is when I look back at this shit now, today, as a grown woman, a lot of times we invite all this foolishness into our life. We can be old and still ain't got no sense. We can be old and still ain't got no damn sense. Right now today, my grandmother has another house that she done brought. And guess who living in her other house? Zedra. Today. I'm so tired of these old build a bad ass relationships. Oh, fix a motherfucker up ass relationships. Oh, ain't got shit ass nigga having relationships. I'm so tired of it. I'm so tired of us having to be accepting of a motherfucker who ain't got shit and ain't trying to get shit and ain't going nowhere. I'm tired of it. And I think a lot of y'all ought to be tired of it too and understand that in this life, if you want to have a full life, you're going to have to require some shit. You're going to have to have a motherfucker that got some shit. Because you can't do shit if you ain't got shit. You ought to be tired of looking at everybody else traveling on Facebook. Your classmates traveling and doing shit. You ought to be tired of other motherfuckers. You seeing them being taken out and you can't ever go nowhere because this motherfucker ain't motivated. Y'all gonna leave these slow ass people where they at. I'm about to start reading. My question is, why haven't she encouraged him before we, before he asked to marry her? We don't know all of the ins and outs. Only thing we have is what was sent in. We don't know. Maybe when she was asking about going back to school and getting a trade, she might have been encouraging in. We don't know. Chanel says, it's one thing to have nothing, but when you don't want to better yourself, it's sad. No one should have to settle. Let me tell y'all something. In my early, I, I, I was a teenage mom. So a lot of times, a lot of women like me, we have been given so early on. In other words, as soon as we became an adult, we had respect. Sorry about that, child. For some reason, I lost my connection. But I'm about to wrap it up anyway. But I want to finish it by saying this. As a young woman who who had their child as a teenager i can honestly say i have always been on the giving end with raising my children giving with me going to school literally with no help financially anything depending on daycares i have been given my husband went to prison i had to take care of him while he was there i have been given when he came home, if you know anything about a person that's been to prison, they have to come home and get themselves established and it's not easy. Meaning I'm caring and still giving. I think that when you have, you know, a lot of times we like to talk shit about women, but the thing is you don't know this other woman's struggle. You don't know her life. And you don't know how much she didn't gave before she decided to say she ain't got shit else to give. I can honestly say at 40 years old, I ain't got shit else to give. I didn't gave to my husband. I didn't gave to my children. When my children have children, they will give to their children. I, I ain't got shit to give to no grandchildren. I will be a grandparent when that time comes, but I ain't about to be your mama. I ain't about to be rocking you all goddamn day long. I ain't about to retire to stay home and keep you. I ain't got nothing else to give. And it's not selfish. It's coming to terms where it's a certain point in time in your life that you have to live your life for you. And you got to get people who going to meet you where you at in your life. A lot of times we always going in and trying to change it, trying to fix it, trying to be everything to everybody. And then we get upset when these people aren't those things to us. I ain't about to be out here looking old before my age. I ain't about to be out here stressing behind nothing. Behind nothing. So, 
it, like I say, when I be looking at the post and I be seeing how women come down on other women for making a choice for themselves, I don't want somebody who ain't got shit. I don't want somebody, if there's a table that exists, we both pulling up to it and we both loading that motherfucker up and saying this is what we got to offer. And if I see that I'm loading, way loading you loading, this ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. And it's nothing wrong with you feeling like that. But these same people that talk shit about you having that type of mentality is the same people that sit back and got to watch you live, got to watch you enjoy life, got to watch you have a full life, and they ain't got shit, and the person they with ain't got shit. So my thing is, it's very common for motherfuckers who ain't got shit to sit back and talk about other people who are trying to do some shit. That, that's normal the way it goes. Okay. Tiara, that shit is for the birds. As women, we should be uplifting one another. If you don't agree with something, keep scrolling. Oh, yeah. But but the thing is, you got to understand, you got to come to terms on who you live in life for. Are you living life for those people? Or are you living life for yourself? Because when it's all said and done, and Sharonda Parker, eyes closed, one thing I will not close, my eyes will not close with, is with regrets. My husband always tell me, you always booking something. You always finding something. You always, because I intend to live a full life. When my eyes close, ain't nobody got to be crying for me because I lived my life. I came here and did the work that I needed to do here. Let's see. All right. Any questions, concerns, or comments? Let's see. Let's see. All right. So, with that being said, that's going to wrap up my life for today. I hope you all, I, well, not hope, but I want you all to be blessed. If you're looking for Halloween costumes, yes, we still have co Halloween costumes in stock. And for those of you all that, that's familiar with this, anybody know about this? I just got two cases of it in. Y'all been coming to the store. Y'all been looking for it. Y'all been asking for it. It's here. I'm marking it down because it's regular $15. I'm marking it down to $9.99. This is sheet spray. If you never experienced sheet spray, you better ask somebody. What you do is you spray your sheets down with this sheet spray. It's a pheromone in it. See, a lot of times we wash our sheets, but we might not be getting no dick that day. And then the day that the dick arrives, I ain't going to say the sheet's stale. Or they dirty because they not. It just don't have that like fresh, fresh smell to them. But see what this does is it get them sheets that fresh, fresh smell. And the motherfucker that's laying in the bed, it turns them on even the more. They get tangled up in the sheets. They be like, ooh, this bitch bed smell good. Every time I come to this bitch house, her bed smell good. Yes. So we do have the sheet spray in stock. I absolutely love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So... We have it here. I'm actually about to put it out on the sales floor. Uh, yes, Amber, finally it is here. I know you're tired of people coming and asking for it. This was actually one of my, when I was doing home parties, this was one of my best sellers because it actually makes your sheets smell good. Um, it, make, it, it, has, it makes them have like a little soft feel to them, like a satin. They kind of slide. And when you come in and you got those little wet spots all up in the bed, you can spray this on the wet spots and they dry them up instantly. It's a quick dry for your sheets as well. So I'm glad you all were able to catch this live today. Now I know that when I go live, I need to go live from the Sharonda LaMonica Parker page so that you can get the notification that I'm going live because I was going live from my other page and no one will see it. So if you missed my live from... Do, 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 do. I didn't do one yesterday. If you missed my live from Tuesday, it is in the announcements. And that one is about how men like to play stupid. So if you missed that live, it is still in the announcements. It is on my YouTube. Because let me tell you something. I don't care, I don't care who they is. If they born with a third leg, they hang between their legs. Sometimes they will play stupid from time to time. But you got to check that shit. Okay, you got to let them know that no, I'm I'm not the one, and you're not about to sit here and play stupid with me because motherfucker, if I know, then you know too. Okay. 
Oh, Tiffany, I'm going to add it to the website. Don't worry. I'm going to add it to the website today. I was just waiting on it to come in so I could take a product picture of it. Because the picture that they had online, I didn't really care for it. So I'm going to actually take a picture of it. And then I'm going to post it on the website. Okay. All right. That's going to conclude my live for today. Um, so you all be blessed. Um, these are regular 15, but they're going to be on sale for $9.99 up until November the 1st. So it's going to be on sale up until November the 1st for $9.99. Okay. All right. You all be blessed.